Ever since that first dim glow in Thomas Edison's light bulb, innovators have been trying to make it better, transforming it into thousands of ways to brighten our world. And I'm not sure, but I'm guessing that when old T. Ed started lighting the way, he probably didn't know how important a selfie flash would become. He also couldn't have known that he was also the inventor of Red Eye. Bringing light into darkness has been a human pursuit since early cave dwellers learned how to make fire hundreds of thousands of years ago. Since then, basic lighting innovations have included oil lamps, candles, gas, and of course, electricity. The Henry Ford's head curator, Mark Ruther, talked to me about the inspired technology that helped illuminate our world. Describe the lighting that's generated by electricity. Well, you're talking basically about arc lighting. So you're talking a very, very intense light, not the kind of light you're going to want to bring into your home. Cities like Detroit deployed what we call moonlight towers, these very, very large towers with arc lights on the top that could illuminate large areas. You couldn't light a city with gas lights that way. It was not that intense of a light. Whoa. Yeah. Like a big orb. Absolutely. Just yeah. coming out from there, yep. the whole city's illuminated. Yeah. Innovating new ways to generate light was not driven by the expanding housing market. Most homes wouldn't be hardwired for electricity until the 1920s. It was the pursuit of the almighty dollar that spurred development. Business was a huge part of it, early adoption. That's where it really starts to edge forward. And that's significant. You're looking at businesses that actually want to run at night. So, you know, places like newspapers, printers, bakeries. Well, so this is a good example of somewhat more recent arc lighting in a sense. These are mercury lights. These are designed for commercial spaces. Some of these might be for roadways. One of the things that develops as a result of electrical technology proliferating and various forms of lamps being developed is a better understanding of light output to what degree it matches sunlight. Perhaps it's tinged a little blue. So there's an entire industry that grows out of the proliferation of electric lighting. What does LED stand for? Light emitting diode. Is LED technology something very recent or has it been with us for a while? It's been with us for a while. So the problem with things like LED technologies and before that compact fluorescence is the cost of manufacture was high and when that goes to market the cost is incredibly high. If you actually looked at the cost of LED lights when they were first put on the market compared to incandescent lamps it was like the choice was obviously incandescent strangely enough. Of course incandescent light uses electricity to heat a wire element inside a bulb to such a high temperature that it glows with visible light. And it's that warm glow that stimulates our senses. The first time I went to New York City to see a Broadway show, I was 12 years old in Times Square. I can still see it. It was as if it was the middle of the day. It was one of the weirdest, most magical experiences. And that sort of wonder, if you will, in bright lights, the magic of what you can do at nighttime with a city, it taps into very ancient notions of how you can push back the darkness. We got a lot of lights here. I know, we're, we're using a lot of power, okay. right? Hey guys, do we really need all these lights? Oh man, wow. We're done.